Hi, I'm Margie Ramers Davis with Crystal Clear Cashflow, creator of the Fast and Easy Way to QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor Certification. Today, we're going to be walking through one of the exercises from our advanced level course, Section 1, Lesson 4, which is all about billable expenses. Now, there are two exercises in this lesson um, that deal with billable expenses. Um, both of them are optional. So you can really, you can pass the test answer the questions just by what's on the course and in the quick notes. Um, so you don't have to stress about that or take the extra time to do this exercise. But if you would really like to dive in and roll up your sleeves, figure out um, how this really works for yourself, um, then you can do these two exercises. Now, in the last exercise, um, we cre just created uh, an expense and we charge that back to our customer. This time, we're going to do the same thing, only now we're going to have a markup, meaning we're going to charge our client or charge our customer more than what we paid for it. So let's go ahead and read this scenario. Before we do that, I can just remind you that uh, if you would like to get a, your hand on a copy of this exercise for yourself, or you'd like to find out more about our courses, of course, all that information is in the description. So our scenario is... Kate has contracted with Craig's Landscaping Services to do some work in her yard. She decides she wants a rock fountain with a cherub. Craig sells rock fountains all the time, but cherub is an unusual request. He will have to buy it from Tim Phillip Masonry and then add it to Kate's bill. He plans to charge her 10% more than he originally paid. How would you set this up? All right, so let's take a look at this. Of course, first thing we have to do is we have to log into the Temple Company, which I have done right here. And then uh, before we can do anything, we are going to have to uh, turn on markup and set it to that 10%. So I'm going to go into my gear icon, account and settings. And then under the expenses tab, now, today while I am filming, uh, there is a little glitch in the sample company, which is related to a new feature that they that Intuit has rolled out. And apparently they are trying to put it in the sample company, uh, which is about industry benchmarks. So that's why it's asking me, it's kind of forcing me here to, uh, to put in my industry, um, even though I'm not on that screen at all. So if this kind of thing happens to you, um, just refresh the screen. Uh, you just have to accept that the sample company is not perfect. It's not the way it worked in the real world. And there are all sorts of things that you just have to click out of or, you know, just accept. All right. So here we are, uh, the way it's supposed to look, um, right here under make expenses and items billable. We talked about that in the last exercise. You have to turn that on and it's already on, but what's not on in the sample company is the markup. So right here, we need to, um, check that. And then we have to say what our default rate is going to be. And in our scenario, we decided that was going to be 10%. Okay, so I'm going to save that and then done. All right, now with that set up, we can create our expense transaction. So we're going to click new, hit expense transaction. And we're buying this again from Tim Phillip Masonry. Now, if you... Um, if you are doing this um, separate from the last exercise, then you will see a, a purchase order pop up and you can just add the rock fountain from the purchase order. I am in the same session as I did for the last exercise, so I've already used that purchase order. That's why it's not popping up in the drawer for me right now. Um, but it is remembering that the last time I bought something from Tim, it was this rock fountain. So I'm going to, let's see, I think we said, um, dun, dun, dun. okay, in the items, okay, so in the items detail, here we are, we're going to make this billable back to Kate, and notice that it automatically fills in a markup. And that markup is not 10%. That did not come from 
the tenant that we put in account and settings. Where that came from is your products and services list. In the products and services list, you have, actually, let me pull that up right now so you can see it. All right, so if I go into my products and services list and I look at the rock found and right here is the sales price and there is the cost. Oh, let me get this off so you can see better. Okay, so here is the sales price and here is the cost. And the difference between that is 120%. If I go to edit, I put in those numbers. I could leave them blank and always enter them when I when I purchase this item or sell this item. Um, but it, this is the default right here because I have put it in there. So let's go back to our expense that we were on. So that's where this 120% came, came on. It's already pre-programmed in there because I buy rock fountains all the time and I already have that. What I don't have is the cherub. So what we need to do now, well, let's first finish up. I got lost here. Okay. So we made that bill. Now we have to add Kate as the, um, as the uh, customer. Okay. So that's in our items grid. Now what we need to do is in the category grid, we're going to add um, the cherub right here. The reason I'm not putting it in the items grid is because I don't have it in products and services, okay? Because it's not something that I buy on. So for category, I'm going to put um, this. Okay. So there are, if I type start, start typing fountain, okay, there are two different uh, accounts or fountain, one that is fountain with no S and one that is fountain with an S, okay? The difference between the two is one of them is an income account and the other one is an expense account. Now, when you are filling out an expense, which we are right now, you have to make sure that you use an expense account right here. If I were to use the income account, then I would get an error message, which I'm not gonna show you right now but you can play around with it and see it for yourself. So I know that this is the correct one. So I'm selecting that one and I want to make sure and put um, Chera in the description. Okay. If I don't, you'll see in a minute why it's super important that I put what the detail of what that is um, in the description. Okay. And the cherub was, how much was that? I have forgotten. All right, so we're gonna put in $100 for the cherub. We're gonna mark it billable. And as soon as I mark it billable, look what happens. Markup, that 10% automatically comes in. That's the one that comes from, that comes from the account and settings, all right? So now we're going to put in Kate as the customer. And I believe that is it for that. All right, so then the next thing we're just gonna do is click save and close. All right, so this is the expense part. So now I bought it. And now what I wanna do is I wanna charge that back to the client or the customer. And so what I'm gonna now is I'm gonna create an invoice for Kate Whelan. So I go to invoice. I go to Kate and you'll notice what happens is as soon as I put in Kate, those bill expenses show up in this drawer right here. So I have the rock fountain, which already came, was there. You'll notice it has the 120% markup. And then I also have the cherub, which is right here. It says $110 because I paid $100 for it, but I'm putting 10% markup on it. So right there. And you'll notice the reason that we have to have the cherub description is when I click add all. So what I want to do is click add all from the drawer, which is right up here. Notice what happened is that there is no 
uh, category for cherub. So if I didn't put that in, I would have no idea what it was. All right. So now all we need to do is click save and close and we're done. If you found this exercise helpful, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you would like to be notified every time we post another exercise or other helpful video about getting your certification, then make sure you subscribe and click the little bell to be notified. And of course, if you have any questions about this exercise, about our courses in general, or if you have suggestions about what you would like hands-on practice doing in QuickBooks Online, then make sure you comment below. That's for me. I can't wait to hear your success story.